the things you notice uh, here is that the people are laid back. Um, it's, you know, things are pretty much nine to five and if you don't get your grocery by six o'clock, you know, you're out of the grocery for the next, you know, for that day until the following day. Tunisier came here, I don't know, a couple months ago, I think, for the Zion Lutheran Church and uh, got to know him personally. I don't go to his church, I go to the Assemblies of God here in Cullum, but this community, community has actually already changed because of him. Um, he's done a lot for our people, you know, just, it doesn't make any difference if you go to his church or not. You know, he's there for everybody, and it's kind of a cool thing. It's, it's things that have really changed as far as um, people helping people. He's done just, his countenance is very, very rare. One of the things that strikes you about Colum is the hospitality of the people. In fact, I would say that when we first came for our interview here, um, that was the thing that hit us the most. Um, so much so that on our way, going back to Minneapolis, and Susan and Heather, actually Heather said, well, Papa, you know, uh, I just want you to know, if they give you a job, uh, take it. They're so welcoming. I mean, everybody seems to be so happy to have us. I mean, it's like when you meet people in town, like, and you feel like you've known them forever. When I stand up at the pulpit to lead worship, I feel like they've been waiting for me to get here. One of the least spoken about is disappointment with God. Just say it means so. I feel so welcomed. They let and me know in, in, in words and in deeds that this is where I belong. Chimizi learning the community, and he takes a part of that and puts it, it's, it's amazing how he puts it in his sermon. I mean, it's part of, so the people understand what he's saying. It's not like he's coming from the cities and sharing, this is what happened, you know, in the cities, this is how we do things there. It's, it's like he's learning the people, he's learning the culture. The Lord's table is open to all, and no one the things that I learned from Lake Nokomis that I've been able to bring here, that I bring with me to Zion Lutheran Church, um, you know, my experience uh, being a member of the council, um, you know, albeit, you know, for about a year because then I had to leave for internship. Um, my experience as part of a uh, worship planning team for one of the Easter's, I believe. Um, you know, experience helping out with confirmation. You know, I, I bring all those things here. At Lake Nokomis, it was fun because um, when we were doing gathering for Sunday school, um, some of the, like, Tim Teamer or youths would lead it, and that would, like, encourage us to like want to lead it too and here I would like to be in the choir and maybe there'll be more younger kids like me that would want to do it too. It's just really fun to like be able to learn the songs and drum rhythms and be able to perform it in front of the church. 
I like I'm going on a journey because it just it's easy to sing and easy to learn and I just love the rhythm. I also like the piano part because it's like jazzy and <laughs> cool. Well, what? I'm going on a journey and I'm starting today. My head is wet and I'm on my way. Christ's mark is on me. It's on you too. It says he loves me and he loves you too. That's great. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Nice job. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. What drove me to be a pastor? Well, definitely God, for sure. <laughs> um, that question always, always reminds me of uh, something a pastor said to me one day um, when he asked me about the same kind of question and I was, you know, uh, giving him a brief a clip of the story of my life. He said, yeah, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, the, the, it's not the hounds of he uh, hell that you worry about. It's the hounds of heaven that you have to worry about because they'll never leave you alone. <laughs> the Spirit is certainly blowing through this place this day. I invite you to lay your hands upon him through those who are with us. Receive this stole as a sign of your I remember putting the stall on him and it just felt great. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And again, I was very proud and excited. <laughs> One of the first things that went through my mind was like, finally, <laughs> you know, finally. Um, and especially because we met in the hospital and I, I, I watched him minister to people and I was one of those people. And I kept telling him that this is where he had to be. And I was just, it was just such, it's like, yes, God has finally, you know, brought him around to where he needed to be. And it was just, it was a very proud moment, but it was just uh, very humbling too, to know that we're finally taking the steps where God wants us. And uh, to know that he will now speak to others. I will, would definitely miss like everyone saying hello and just like, having wanting to start a conversation with me because it was so nice that the everyone in that congregation liked to talk to me even though I was like a youth. God has led me through so many things. Um, working in the hospital settings at the University of Minnesota and then Fayview um, that was my training ground. Uh, I went, you know, I came to the U of M to study one thing and I left with something completely different. Um, it was there that God filled my heart with, with compassion and love for others, for people. And, um, and the love of God built up in me that was passed on to me, to my parents, and to so many people in the communities of faith that I've been part of, um, you know, 
uh, God used that to draw me into uh, pastoral, um, into pastoral work. Thank you for being there for me, for your prayers, your support. Um, even those that I think quietly may not have said a lot, we're still there. And I just would say thank you to Lake Nokomis Lutheran for helping me grow.